I think that the best way to approach the ESMO and CBS is to think of it as a clinical tool. Even if the score comes out of a thorough and deep analysis of the published literature evidence, in fact, it gives you a quick, easy to understand idea of what you may propose to your patients. In the last years, a lot of treatments have emerged and reached our everyday clinical practice. Such treatments have sometimes been approved after demonstrating statistically significant improvements of some clinical endpoints, such as overall survival, progression-free survival, or quality of life. But is statistically significant the same as clinically significant? This is a question that every clinician has asked him or herself at least once. The real answer to that? Well, only a very long clinical experience and the use of treatments can actually give everyone a thorough answer to this question. But the ESMO and CBS has been thought to try and answer to that question even when we talk about newer treatments, those treatments that merely no one actually knows in detail, I think that the ESMO and CBS will have a more and more important role in the future. I think that its use will get wider, not only in clinical practice, but also in the public policy issues. In fact, a higher and higher number of treatments have been approved in the last years. But the access to such treatments may be difficult because of the incapability of the national health systems to afford the expenses coming from these treatments. The use of the ESMO and CBS might then be useful in this field in order to understand what treatments give the highest clinical benefit and then to give them a priority in terms of access and reimbursement. Mm -hmm.